This is The Process Shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater. And I've seen The Witch Who Came From the Sea, a psychological horror drama from Matt Simber made back in 1976. It follows Molly, a woman who is adored by her nephews, idolizes her sea captain father, drinks quite a lot, loves television, and has disturbing fantasies of murdering men in sadistic manners, including good old-fashioned castration. It's a relatively quiet life for her until one of those fantasies becomes a reality, when two star football players are found dead, with evidence pointing to her as the culprit. As the investigation slowly progresses, Molly seems to go about completely unaware of any role she may have in all of this. Though it isn't long before her own mental walls begin to break down and the trauma of her childhood resurfaces. It's one hell of a trip and the movie doesn't pull any punches. Details of Molly's childhood are delivered piece by piece until we're outright given the truth, and it is not pretty at all, nor is there any real reprieve ever given. The after effects are seen pretty clearly through Molly's modern personality, and while it's easy to have sympathy for her, it's a life that comes with disappointment from her sister, who knows the truth of the matter. Molly's further obsession with television also seems to be a reflection of this trauma. As she tends to lose herself in images of beautiful men on the screen and the idealization of their figures. Her greater character is actually really well-rounded. Even if the film does skimp on developing other characters and spells things out a bit clearly within dialogue before the end. Either way, it's made pretty clear that the psychological aspect of the story is the greater focus over the more visceral horror side of things, though that's obviously still in here. It's just not the focus. It wants to be deeper than that. Despite the heaviness and seriousness of the story and its themes, it's unfortunately held back a bit by the actual production limitations. The locations are rather varied and at times lavish, but it's also pretty clear that the film was shot in whatever houses that friends or crew members had owned, or wherever they could shoot in public that wouldn't get them in trouble. It's not a bad way to cut corners, of course, but it leads to a lot of flat and repetitive shots with pretty bad lighting. There's rarely any inventive camera work outside of a few dreamlike sequences that are really more slow-paced than something truly dreamlike. Editing also tends to stretch scenes out a bit, maybe to fill up runtime, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was because all they had were a few long takes of scenes before they had to run away because they didn't have filming permits or something. Either way, the dreamlike concept does stick around throughout the movie, working out pretty well almost because of the production limitations. It does take a bit of the tension out of some of the more horror-driven scenes, which exposes the general poor quality of the special effects, or lack thereof, but it also gives the film an eerie ambiguity, making you question just what is real and what is fantasy. Granted, the movie doesn't leave those threads hanging, but it shows the kind of story that the filmmakers wanted to tell. Something not necessarily personal, but definitely well beyond the usual scope of horror or drama. Unfortunately, they didn't so much fly too close to the sun as much as they didn't have the wind at their backs, or some other metaphor about sailing something more appropriate for the movie. The Witch Who Came From The Sea Matt Simber, 1976 Four stars. I'd say it's worth giving a watch for yourself.
That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. It might be worth noting that this is one of those cold shower movies you might see in your life. That is, you're gonna want a cold shower when you're done watching it. I know I do.